110,000 years ago, glaciers moved through the Midwest of the United States, flattening the landscape. One area, however, escaped glaciation, leaving behind an ancient Paleozoic landscape of stone giants and spring-fed brooks. As time continues to move on, the life cycles and dramas of a top predator unfold beneath the surfaces of these pristine streams. Rainbow and brown trout and uh, brook trout um, like to have uh, an environment that has very clean, high quality of water. It needs to be cool, uh, cool to cold water. It still ends up killing the eggs. It ends up uh, damaging their gills. Rainbows especially like the faster moving waters, uh, while browns like pools and, and areas with cover. For well over a hundred years, billions of fish have been created in fish hatcheries just like this. As a result, the fingerlings have been planted in lakes and streams throughout the world. Without these remarkable institutions, the extraordinary populations of fish that fishermen catch all over the world today would probably not survive. These fish are an integral part of the food chain, providing valuable sustenance for those smart enough or fast enough to catch them. Between September to mid-November, brook and brown trout migrate toward the headwaters of creeks and streams where reproduction takes place. They return to the same areas where their lives began. During their migration, these fish go through a remarkable transformation. Their normal coloration explodes into much more vibrant red and golden hues. Brook trout reach their maturity at the age of two and spawn every year afterwards for the rest of their lives. The female finds an area of the stream bed covered in sand and gravel, and then starts digging a shallow cavity where the mating ritual takes place. The hen's red building actions stimulate the males, who rush to her side in mass, waiting for an opportunity to enter the nest and fertilize the eggs. It's usually the largest and most aggressive male that takes up the chief position. He fends off the other males vying for his spot by aggressively chasing and biting them. At 500 times its natural speed, the male's strategy becomes clear. Placing himself between the receptive female and her would-be suitors, he secures his place as the dominant male. But sometimes, all the competition can be a real turn. Eventually, the eggs are laid and fertilized. They remain in their sandy beds until late winter or very early spring, at which time the small trout emerge to explore their new world. These are rainbow trout. In about two and a half weeks, they will have buttoned up. Right now, you can see their yolk sacs clearly uh, underneath the fish. The, the fins are well formed. At this stage, their, their stomach is not yet functioning. Their intestines are not yet functioning. Um, and it doesn't need them yet. It, it won't need them until it starts feeding, which would be in another two weeks past the stage they're in right now. The Salmonids, which would be the group that trout fall into, generally have what are called par marks on the sides of them in the younger stages. And these par marks are just little bands. They help with some camouflage of the fish because at smaller stages, they're food for a lot of different animals. Northern pike, bass, they'll prey heavily on trout, especially on the younger life stages. They also have cannibalism. Brown trout are uh, prisivorous. They will eat fish uh, and they'll eat each other. They'd eat their own offspring. As the fish grows older, over the next course of about a year, these bands um, will, will become lighter and eventually disappear. And as they do, the fish will start um, developing the uh, coloration that, that uh, people would uh, typically associate trout with having. Onset of the autumnal equinox, wildlife prepares for long, frigid winters. A thick layer of snow and ice cover the Midwest. 
But in the driftless area of southern Wisconsin, some streams never freeze over, creating perfect habitat for trout and the creatures that depend on them through the cold winter months. While surrounding vegetation dies, these free-flowing waters maintain temperatures that can support plant and animal life. Underground springs well up, providing a more or less constant temperature year-round, creating some of the richest trout waters in the world. 